Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you guys how to not only just code your ECU, but in a sense hack it. So we got the key in the on position. We're going to go to info sources and we're going to go to service info, check control messages. All I got is ignition switched on. Let's close the door. All systems okay. Everything seems fine. This is a cold start. Let's start it up. And I have cold start disabled in my custom tune. I don't have any exclamation mark. All systems are okay. If I were to give it some gas. And if we go over to the check control messages, we got a fuel pump code and I'm going to turn the key off. And this is what you'll see every time you turn your key off. That's just a general warning to say, look, Based on your last run, your fuel pump didn't seem right. Go ahead and get it checked out because it's probably about to fail. Let's scan the codes now. So let's connect up our data cable to see what's going on. We're gonna check the codes with MHD. So we got two AAE, that's what you'd get. That's the code you'll have if you're getting this issue. I have this code because I installed the Walbro 455 E85 compatible fuel pump. It's a stage two plus fuel pump, so I can run more than 50% ethanol. So that's expected, you will get this if you have a third generation fuel pump module on your E90. I've actually upgraded from a second generation to a third generation. There's an old video on my channel showing you guys that. But that's why I have this code and the only way to get rid of it, there's no real problem here. It's just the computer is not seeing the type of power draw that it's expecting. So we gotta actually not only just code these, you kind of hack it and I'll explain once we get in front of the computer. So let's get set up with the computer and take it from there. All right, so now we'll bring the USB cable over to the laptop, verify we have a connection. We're good. Now we're gonna go into NCS expert file load profile, RevTurs NCS expert profile, hit F1, F3, choose our chassis, it's gonna be E89 here, it's closest variant. Pull our vehicle order off our car access system for the keys and whatnot. And we're gonna hit back, process an ECU, we're gonna look for the EKP module. Tells us the control files that we're using. Now we want to read the ECU. It's going to pull the data off there and pull up our trace file, as you can see there. Now, I already know from a bit of research that th this particular line is where we got to do our work. This is hexadecimal code. I'm trying to keep this interesting for you guys, I'm trying to keep it quick. Honestly, I've watched some of my earlier videos where I was trying to show some coding and it's kind of cringy to me, but you know what? You evolve with time. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to explain the logic here. So I have this program called NCS Dummy. I'm going to load that up. The module we're interested in working with is called the EKP. Right here, EKP M63 C13. I have the latest generation, th uh, third generation fuel pump control module. Now we're gonna browse for that file I just made. And as you can see here, our trace file from today. Now, the flow characteristics are listed here. What I'd like to do is export this as a text file. Here, make sure your format is not set to word wrap, it'll screw things up. But it tells you, okay, this is what you got. Characteristic curves. This is all the data that's in there. And we can go down. And then we'll see functions. Fault limits is our issue. Fault limits. Right here. So let's go ahead and scroll down on this to fault limits. Here's our fault limits. They're all the same. Now what it's saying is at this address line here, 
zero, zero, 300, 200 is where it all starts and where you gotta work. So I pulled the trace file up and it's right here. This is represented as in hexadecimal. This is the length, so 16. If you convert it, I'll show you here. 10 in hex converted to decimal 16. And the next line down, zero E. If we type that in, it's gonna say 14. So 16 plus 14. So 16 plus 14 between 200 and 210, that's the whole address line for all the fault indicators, which works out to, when you look at the length, 1E. So 1E is gonna represent those two numbers added together, which is 30. That's our address line length. If you take all these individual bytes here, you're gonna have 30 combinations, all separated with commas, okay? Hopefully you guys are with me there and it makes some sense. So now, this is where I've seen some threads about how to get around this issue and people try different uh, combinations. But what it's saying here is, I've already kind of looked this up. So A0 has to do with the high voltage. 1D has to do with the low voltage. B4 has to do with the current on the high side and 14 has to do with the current on the low side. Now, this is really easy and we're kind of lucky here. It's kind of a coincidence, but the third generation fuel pump module that's on this car came in the X1 from like 2011. And later in the X1's life, they made this model. They made this model for Brazil. This is kind of funny. So the reason I need to custom code this module is so that it can not fault when it sees high current. It's gonna see more current that's considered normal. That would usually indicate a regular fuel pump either failing or it has like a clogged fuel filter, for instance. But they made this. Only in Brazil, it runs on E100, 100% ethanol. Okay, so if you just type that in, it comes in, they only sold it in Brazil because there's a movement in Brazil to be running on flex fuels. So this is E100 compatible. So we're talking about the X120i Active Flex that runs on 100% ethanol only in Brazil because over there they're all about running on ethanol instead of fuel. It's cheaper and, it's, and the government subsidizes it. And what I've done on my car is I want to run E60 for the sake of tuning, but really what it boils down to is my fuel pump's gonna draw more power than is considered normal. But it, luckily the e X1, is based off of the E90. It's basically just an E90 in an SUV shell. So since it's based on an E90, I don't have to even do any guessing here. If we look, it'll be easy to find it in this file here. So fault limits. If we scroll over, some of these don't have any meaning. Some of them do. I'm running this, this value 103 here. Let me find it. So I'm running one of these, I'm, char I'm characterized here, right here, N54, N55 with the third generation module, right? Here's my hex, right here. But if we scroll way down, so value 117 right here, is for an E84, which is an X1 with the N20 motor running on 100% ethanol, okay? With the third generation fuel pump module. Hope you guys can read that, I think you can. So basically, take an E90, if you really wanted to, you could take the ECU out of that car, take this engine, toss it in my car, and there would be a profile which would be appropriate for running 100% ethanol because they're based on the same, they're cousin cars. So that just made, it's like you got a hint anyway, okay? So this address line here is appropriate. What it boils down to is FF. Hopefully you guys don't find this boring, I really don't know, but, so what it's saying here is, if you look at NCS dummy, you have an address line, where to find it, you have a length of total characters, which is all these in batches of two, which is, which is called a byte, and then you have your mask a range from anywhere between zero and FF. Now FF in hex converts to 255. So 255 
So between zero and 255 are the total possible positions that you can have. It doesn't necessarily straight correlate, correlate to anything, but for instance, my stock file here, B4, is the amount of between zero and 255, my ECU is gonna only accept up to 180. We can't say definitively how much current that's going to be, but all I know is as a percentage, I'm at 70% of the total potential range. In other words, that translates to a certain current amount, maybe 14 amps, 16 amps, etc. but I'm at the 70% range. Anything beyond 70%, of what the ECU was expecting to see will give you that fault that I have on my dash and that and that code because that's what it does it, it looks at all this data here it compares it against what it's expecting and if it's not getting that uh, if it's pulling more than that then it will say hey you have a problem go get it fixed preventative maintenance but we're lucky here a 0 ff 2d the first four bytes here are what we're worried about. So what I have now is A0, that's the same, that works out to 16, 160, but I have 1D on the low side, B4, 14. If I want to, all I gotta do here is copy these values. Let me change this into decimal. We can't say with certainty that this correlates to exactly, let's say 160 divided by 10, right? It's just between zero and 256, that is, a, you know, you're, you're at 60 something percent. That will translate if you were to calculate into a voltage on the high side. This will translate into a voltage on the low side. What they've done from the factory for the, the X1 with the active flex, the one that's meant to run on 100% ethanol for Brazil that runs this module, is they just basically pegged that. They got rid of the feature. They made it so they made it as high as they could to basically ignore the fact that that car is running a lot of current and it's going to seem way out of it'll be so unproportional because 100 percent ethanol on a on a four cylinder you're going to need a massive fuel pump to keep up and flow an extra 40 or 50 percent more fuel so what they did is they said okay between zero and 255 let's just peg it at 255 basically ignore it it's a value that's never going to come up so that feature is missing on that car. You won't be notified when your fuel pump's pulling too much current technically on that car, but it's a trade-off. It was a way for them to parts bin and use the third generation module and share parts from an E90. So I wanna do the same thing here. I'm running E60 in my car. I don't want that fault every time I drive. I can keep this super simple. I can just basically select this. But the rest of the values have other meanings. I'm not gonna go ahead and copy that whole thing because it won't be appropriate. I'm only going to copy these four digits here. So what I want to do, save this as my backup. Save and sound, my stock file is there. I can revert back or I can always, you know, not a big deal. So I'm going to change this back to hex and I'm going to copy right here. A0, we're the same. 3-2, we're gonna go from 1D to 3-2. We're gonna go from B4 to FF. And we're gonna go from 2D, from 14 to 2D. You know, maybe my title seemed a bit clickbaity, but in my opinion, we've hacked the ECU. This was never kind of meant to be this way. We're getting a hint from a preset value because they just happened to randomly make a version of this car meant to run on a high con ethanol content for a niche country like Brazil. But you know what? That's That tells me what I need. It's compatible data. You know, you're basically saying, you know what, FF, go all the way to 255. Let's not even worry about the, the fault anymore. So I'm gonna save this as back to NetoDat, just straight NetoDat. We're gonna go back to the work directory. Work. We're gonna save it as the NetoDat.man. 
replace it. That's our manipulated file ready to be loaded back into ECU. Let's open things up here. So we're gonna load back up NCS dummy here. We're gonna look at the EKP. We're gonna load that manipulated file I just saved. And we're gonna go down to our fault limits. All that stuff's not selected. We just have an actual random one that doesn't match anything anymore. And that's what I made. FF2D to match this. A032FF2D. A032FF2D. So now we're running custom data. That's it. We've essentially hacked the ECU, took hints off of the, the model that runs ethanol from the factory. It's compatible. Now we can push this back into the ECU. So go to NCS expert, click basic functions. We were gonna say co-appy code by the manipulated netodat file. We have to type in netto.dat.man. There, we just pushed that file into the ECU, nice and easy. Let's read it back off the ECU to make sure we're good. And as you see, right at this 200 line, we have A032FF2D. We haven't changed anything else. All we changed is the fact that it's not allowed to fault anymore because that's way out of whack. So let's start things up now and see what it did. Can we make that error come back? Hopefully not. All right, so let's clear the codes. No active codes. Let's read the codes. Let's start it up now. Battery went low there, so. I guess you could say this makes for a more interesting video, but I forgot one crucial step. We have to do the checksum. So if you notice on this here, if you go all the way to the bottom here, we have a checksum value. You have to be able to take all that code and compare it against a checksum, they call it. My checksum was 339E, which is right here, 339E. That is our checksum. If I were to only change these values, it's not gonna match a checksum anymore. So that would be a problem. You can manipulate this all you want, but if you don't add it all up and verify the checksum has been updated, it won't let the module work at all. You basically disable it. You break the module until you fix it. I'll show you how to calculate the checksum now. So our checksum value is actually based off this CRC CCITT X FFFF. That will give you this value here, 29B1. So what we gotta do now is go to our original work on, working backup, my original backup, copy all this, let's go open a new notepad. So what we gotta do is get rid of all that. So now that we've removed all that, we have to remove all the commas in between as well. FYI, I'm deleting the original checksum because that shouldn't be part of your calculation. So you'd have to do the same if you're following along. So all those commas are gone. All right, so I made a mistake. I forgot to change this over to hex, but ultimately I just did this again. Put it all in one big line, pasted it in here, control V, 
make sure that I have hex here, calculate my CRC. So we want the CCITT 0XFFFF. It says that the checksum is 3399E, 339E. So let's go check out our original backup. That's our original backup there. We had 339E. So all I did was I deleted these characters here. I, I got rid of everything from here. I deleted all that, all that, all that, all that. Just took all these digits, put them in a row, got rid of all the commas, and we got to verify. I changed this to hex, paste it all in there, and my checksum is 339E. I didn't do that before when I changed the values. Now I'm gonna update to a new checksum. This is my original checksum from the car. I'm just verifying that everything was fine. Now let's do it with the new data. Okay, so here's the new values that I entered in. I gotta do the same thing here. Get rid of all this. Let's get rid of the checksum now in advance. So now I'm gonna get my new checksum value. Instead of it being 339E, let's see what it's gonna be now, assuming I didn't screw anything up. So I have a whole new value now, 0EFD. So now, going back to my original backup, changing this to B2, FF, 2D. My checksum is now 0EFD. 0 E F D 0 E F D 0 E F D I have my new values A032 FF 2D So if I save this as my manipulated file here and if I got any typos there my car is not going to start that's one way to know if you screwed up the checksum but since we're doing such raw hacking here or coding you know, to a level that even NCS expert can't really follow along with, we have to update the checksum. It's just the way it goes. Everything has to be checked against checksum electronically controlled fuel pump. So in other words, add everything up and check it. Sum it up and check it. Does it seem to make sense? So if it adds up all the hex data, but then the checksum of all that doesn't add up, the module won't even activate. Let's go to NCS dummy. Now we're going to go down to the checksum, which is 0EFD. We're going to go to my fault limits. And we have A032FF2D, which is similar to A033FF2D here. I have a file which I can push into my ECU now. So let's go ahead and do that. Fingers crossed that it all starts up after. All right, now we're running the new corrected updated file. Let's go see if it starts now. All right, so take two. All seems well. Can you give it some gas? No code. Let's shut it off and start it again. Okay, so turn the key fully off again. Let's start it again. My battery went pretty low when I recharged it. That's why I had that reverse light malfunction. Let's 
There you go. All systems okay. There's no way it would have ever let me rev beyond 2000 RPM without faulting. So we fixed it. We custom coded it. In my opinion, I consider that hacking. You saw how involved that was. Let's say you completely screw this up and break the module. It's very easy to reinitialize a module and just flash it back to stock and have it pull the data back down. So I, like it probably, I probably seem fearless in this video that I was able to do this. But at the end of the day, I knew that it's very easy to reinitialize a module and just get it to recover and encode back to default settings. So worst case, I even for a moment there bricked it, but then I put the checksum in and fixed it, no big deal. So it seems probably super intimidating, but I got the job done. And I'm using values that BMW used on their X1 for this exact module. So all systems okay, it's been running for a while now. I can give it gas gone I'm never gonna get that morning again now if I turn the key off I don't get that little pop-up I don't have that hoist symbol with the car it's basically completely fixed now this video is not for everybody it's only for people that have a newer generation or they're running a third generation fuel pump module on their e90 and they have a Walbro high flow fuel pump and they don't want to have that message every time they shut the car off or have that code always pending. So I wanted this to be informative and hopefully for you guys that didn't need to do this, maybe you understand a little bit more about how the modules work on these cars and how you can kind of get them to do anything if you know what you're doing. It would have been really difficult to know exactly what to put in there, but it was great that they already made a model that had a fuel pump in there like this for Brazil and I could just use that information, but we fixed it. I think it's pretty cool and you know what my title probably seems clickbaity but I think we hacked it so hopefully you guys found this video entertaining useful or informative so please consider subscribing I upload regularly